I'm about to get dark. There are quality peer reviewed papers showing that jet lag will shorten your life. It will kill you earlier. Wait, jet lag is a serious thing. A family story about this. When I was growing up, I had a family member travel overseas for work and take a sleeping pill. I won't had a case of total amnesia for a week. That's not entirely uncommon. If you've ever been really jet lagged and fallen asleep, doesn't even have to be in the middle of the day, woken up, you might not know where you are. And that's because time and space are really linked and the brain wasn't designed to be transported four, five, six hours into a new time zone. It just wasn't. Our brain and the biological mechanisms that govern circadian timing were designed to be shifted by a couple hours, not necessarily six or nine or 12 hours. So you really mess yourself up. I've had that experience. I usually experience it as fluctuations in mood. I flew 12 hours out of phase and it was a mess. I was getting vertigo. Um, I wasn't hallucinating, but I was really out of it. And my mood was just all over the place. It was very bizarre. Jet lag, even if you don't experience it as mood shifts or amnesia, it can shorten your life. Now, here's what's interesting. Traveling westward on the globe is always easier than traveling eastward, okay? It's interesting because the effects of jet lag on longevity have shown that traveling east takes more years off your life than traveling west. Now, of course, traveling 30 minutes into a new time zone or three hours, just one time zone over is, or two time zones over rather, is far less detrimental to your biology and psychology than a eight hour shift or a nine hour shift. Now, here's what's interesting. When we think about the effects of jet lag on longevity or this idea that it can shorten our lives, we have to ask ourselves, why? Why is that? And it turns out there's a pretty simple explanation for this set of neurons in our spinal cord and body and brain that regulate our wakefulness and our sleepiness. Turns out that human beings and probably most species are better able to activate and stay alert than they are to shut down their nervous system and go to sleep on demand. So if you really have to push and you really have to stay awake, 